Okay, this is yet another in a series of videos I'm making for my site, pfsensesetup.com. Just a series of instructional videos in which I demonstrate how to do some basic things with the pfsense uh, firewall. And this video is actually a follow-up to a previous, previous video that I've done about um, installing and configuring Squid 3. And in that video, I was a little bit surprised about, uh, I tried to enable a a firewall rule and it didn't have the effect that I expected it to. So I'm going to demonstrate some of the uh, interactions between firewall rules and, and squid proxy. Um, so first I'm going to log into the pfSense box. I'm going to click on login here and we're at the dashboard. We have version 2.2.3 which is the latest version as of this recording. I'm going to go to services and click on proxy server just so I can show what the proxy server settings are. And we have the proxy server enabled on LAN and DMZ. And just FYI, I'm going to click on ACL here. And there's nothing on our whitelist or blacklist here. So uh, there's nothing being blocked by Squid. I'm going to go to Firewall. I'm going to click on Rules. I'm going to click on the LAN tab. And in a previous video, we had created a block slash dot rule. So I'm going to re-enable that. So we have it set to reject. I'm going to uncheck the disable this rule uh, checkbox so that we can re-enable it. I'm going to click on save here. And um, then we're going to have to click on apply changes to apply the changes. And we might expect that now slash dot would be blocked. And we might be surprised by the results. So I click on slash dot here. And lo and behold, it connects to slash dot. Our rule apparently did not take effect. So the squid proxy took precedent over the firewall rule. So we're going to go to proxy server again. And just to prove that that's what happened, we're going to disable, or at least temporarily disable, um, Squid on the LAN interface. So we're just going to we're going to have it so it only applies to the DMZ interface here. And this computer is on the LAN interface, so these these rule changes will these changes will take will take effect on on the computer here. So. Let's see, we have it, you know, we have a, it's, it's set now to only work on the DMZ. So we'll click on save here and it'll take a little bit longer to, to save the settings for squid than it did to save the rules, but it will soon take effect. I'm going to open up a new tab here so we can uh, try to access slash dot again. And, uh, seems to be saving and now that, okay it's saved so now we can try this again so we're going to try to access slash dot and we get an error message the requested url cannot be retrieved so apparently the rule uh, takes effect so it's so you know it seems that that in order to get the the rules firewall rules to take effect where we want to block certain things or allow certain things we need to not have squid on that interface and just to confirm that I'm going to re-enable the squid on the LAN interface and I'm going to scroll down here and click on save and we should be able to access slash dot now even though we have a rule uh, blocking slash dot because uh, the Squid proxy should take precedent over um, over our firewall rule. So okay, so now it's saved. We're gonna go back and we're gonna try to access slash dot dot org. We're gonna click on this, and lo and behold, we're able to access slash dot again. So. Uh, 
this this is something that you, you need to be cognizant of if you're if you're using uh, squid that um, you know apparently you can't use uh, utilize the firewall rules that you may may have created um, so you're gonna have to use an access control list and so just to demonstrate that let's go back and we'll go to proxy server again and we'll go to the ACL and we'll put slash dot dot org on our blacklist and uh, we'll click on save and then it's it will save this and and just to prove that the our firewall rule doesn't have anything to do with this we'll go back and we'll disable we'll again disable the uh slash dot firewall rule but it won't it shouldn't matter because we blacklisted it so we'll go here and save And then after that, we need to apply changes. So we'll click on the apply changes button. And now slash dot should, should be back to being blocked. And we get again, we get error. The requested URL cannot be retrieved. Um, and again, if necessary, if, if we want to just show that uh, we can change that setting back to the way it was we can go to ACLs here and remove this from the blacklist or we could just whitelist it uh, um, and click on save and uh, again it will take a few seconds to save the the, um, the squid settings but then the uh, you know change take effect and we can go back and we're back to accessing slash dot again so there we go so just something to be aware of if you if you're using squid to um you, you know you need there's certain options that that the firewall rules make very easy that you know i don't apparently um might be a little bit harder to implement with squid like um you know for example we did uh you know with the here let me go to the firewall rules here and, and uh show some of them uh we had gone in and we had we had blocked certain sites we had blocked youtube um and you know we we had created an um an alias for 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 youtube which which incorporate all the different ip addresses youtube had uh uses we had created a rules to um block access during work hours i think we have a block work hours rule Let's see if i can find that I may have deleted that one though uh, yeah I, I think i deleted that but you know we had we had it set up so that we could we could block access during work hours but allow access during lunch hour um and you know different things like that and it was very easy to do that with firewall rules and, and I think it may be more difficult to do, do that with squid so it's just something that you may want to be aware of if you're if if you're thinking of using squid to uh, for for whatever reason um okay well that's the that's i think that uh, that's going to wrap up this video um if you found this video helpful you might consider visiting my website pfsensetup.com for other uh, videos and also um tutorials and, and other uh, information about PFSense. Um, so I think that my, my next video may be about uh, you know, creating a captive portal page for, uh, using Squid. Um, so that should be coming out pretty soon. Um, but otherwise, uh, I'll see you on in the next video.